Today at the Daily Eco, we delve into the fascinating world of volcanic eruptions and their classifications. What are volcanic eruptions? Volcanic eruptions happen when there is a surge in temperature and movement within the Earth's core. This causes magma to rise up through the channels and chimneys in volcanoes. The intensity of an eruption depends on a few key factors, such as the temperature and acidity of the lava, the gases released, the silica content in the lava, higher silica means a bigger explosion, and the condition of the volcano's chimney. If the chimney is blocked, the eruption tends to be more violent. So join us as we break down each type of volcanic eruptions with its definition. However, before we continue, let us put you to the test. Where do volcanoes typically form? In the middle of the tectonic plate, at the edge of the tectonic plates, both A and B are correct. Think about it carefully because at the end of the video, you can check if you were right. Now, let's dive into the various types of volcanic eruptions. Hawaiian eruptions. Hawaiian eruptions are characterized by highly fluid lava, effusive eruptions, extensive lava flows, and gentle slopes. Hawaiian eruptions are the most common type worldwide, named after the volcanoes in Hawaii which exhibit these characteristics. The lava produced is highly fluid, containing minimal explosive gases, resulting in gentle eruptions where lava overflows from the crater, forming rivers that can travel considerable distances before solidifying. Consequently, the resulting volcanic cones have a gentle slope due to the gradual descent of lava materials. Estrombolium eruptions these eruptions are named after Stromboli, the volcano situated in Lipari, Italy. They are characterized by fluid lava containing explosive and toxic gases, resulting in violent explosions. Unlike Hawaiian eruptions, Strombolian eruptions typically do not produce ash, but they can continue for extended periods, sometimes even years. As the lava materials descend the slope, they contribute to the formation of the volcanic cone. However, unlike Hawaiian eruptions, the lava from Estromboli eruptions tends to cool down sooner and does not travel as far. Volcanic eruptions, named after Italy's Mount Volcano, exhibit distinct characteristics compared to their fluid lava counterparts like Hawaiian and Estrombolian eruptions. Its lava is not fluid and it hardens quickly. The eruption of this type of volcano occurs with fast and very strong explosions, with a lot of gases and ash. They are some of the most spectacular eruptions and can last several days or even months. Plinian eruptions These eruptions, known as Plinian eruptions, are incredibly violent and derive their name from Pliny the Elder, who lost his life during one such event. Similar to volcanic eruptions, Plinian eruptions involve intense explosions. However, Plinian eruptions are often more powerful due to the heightened pressure of the gases involved. They often produce distinctive mushroom or fungus-shaped ash clouds. As the ejective materials cool, they form dense ash clouds capable of completely blanketing entire cities. A vivid illustration of a Plinian eruptions is the catastrophic event of Mount Vesuvius, which buried the ancient city of Pompeia under layers of ash. Pelian eruptions In a Pelian eruption, the lava is extremely thick and sticky, to the point where it forms a plug within the volcano's crater. The pressure from the gases builds up until it violently forces the plug out, sometimes even causing the crater to rupture. Additionally, there is a possibility that the lava might be expelled from the sides of the volcano if the plug hasn't fully risen. 
So this type of eruption is named after the Mount Pele, a volcano located in the Antilles. Submarine eruptions Submarine eruptions, though often overlooked, are actually more common than other types. They are named after a notable eruption that occurred in Iceland. During these events, a mixture of water vapor and ash rises, but their visibility varies based on the depth of the eruption site and its intensity. And going back to the question we asked you before, have you thought it through? The correct answer is B. Volcanoes form at the boundaries of tectonic plates. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And until next time.